What's up everybody, Gary Simon here. So today we are going to talk about shadows and not just talk, I'm going to show you five different types of shadows that you can integrate as a part of your UI designs and your various UI elements like on cards. So as always, if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably want to be a better designer. And if that's the case, how much do you really want it? Because at designcourse.com, I've created a UI UX course that will help you go from designing layouts that I might rate a four or five up to eight and beyond. But more important than that, as a better designer, this means that you can land higher paying clients in jobs. This course includes over 16 hours of video, 40 interactive UI design tests, and even mentorship, where I personally take a look at your work that you submit, I review it, and many times I also revise it, providing you with great feedback to help you become a better designer. Now, for this video, I want you to use the the coupon code UI2022 and that will give you 22% off at checkout. All right, everybody, I'm going to attempt to remember to link this Figma prototype so that you can experiment and follow along. I'm a big advocate of actually following along as opposed to just watching because it helps you build muscle memory. And so you're going to find this card right here uh, that was created. This is actually a, one of the first projects that's coming up from the upcoming interactive CSS course at designcourse.com. Um, and this is just a basic card design and we're going to apply a shadow to it in different contexts. So um, I'm just going to shift alt and drag this over so that we have um, a bunch. Actually, you know what we'll do instead of doing that, we're gonna take the actual frame and really just make it really long just for demonstration purposes. All right, so we're starting off here without a shadow. There is no shadow applied to this background as you can see over here. Um, and this right here in this context is completely fine. Like you don't have to have a shadow in this context. I, if we made the background color the same, all right, now it seems like we, we might need a background color, although maybe not necessarily so. You don't always have to have a card container that's wrapping around everything. Um, but going back here, this here, 100% fine, you don't need a shadow. It's really just a subjective preference. All right, so now let's actually add a shadow to this. So uh, we take it, we're gonna click plus, and Figma at least here, by the default, the first effect is drop shadow that does apply. And it applies just this, this rough shadow right here, where um, if we look at the settings, we'll see that the X is zero, Y is four, so it's moving it over to, uh, it's moving it down a little bit, and then the blur is at four. This right here, this shadow, is fine as well. It's a little bit dark. Uh, it's at 25% for the opacity, but if we come over here, we can drag this down and even make it a little bit more minimal. And to me, this is fine. And then you have um, a range of acceptability for these values here for the X and Y. Uh, if you wanna make them both four, that's fine as well, as we can see. The, the goal here though, the one thing you don't wanna do is you don't want to make, I'll, I'll do an example right here, you don't wanna make this shadow too prominent, or in other words, you don't want high contrast. Uh, here's what happens when you do that. When you bump this opacity up, it starts to make, it starts to distract from the content itself because this is now high contrast. You don't want that. I've seen so many aspiring newbie UI UX designers uh, make this mistake where they have these shadows, they're just, they're just too dark, you know? They're distracting. They should be in the background. They should be a very subtle aesthetic like this, all right? It's very important to get that right. And this is the case with pretty much every single, ex with every single shadow that we're gonna do with exception to one, and you'll see in a second. Um, so this is 100% cool. Now, I will say this, if you have a colored background, this one's like a light blue background that these cards are sitting on, um, outside of typically using just black, which is what we're using here, as you can see, it is completely black for that shadow right here. I, uh, You can grab the, the actual background color, just like that, and then just bring it down. And it makes the color seem a little bit more natural as opposed to this gray right here that's, that's occurring, that's being mixed uh, between the two values. So if you have a colored background like this, that's the technique I would personally use if I wanted this type of uh, minimalist shadow, all right? 
So let's go ahead and delete that one. We'll say this is our first shadow, very typical, nothing fancy happening here. Um, let's go ahead and replicate this. And now let's create a hard shadow. And by hard shadow, I mean having no blur. And let's also increase maybe the X and Y value just a bit. So we'll have them both at nine or so. This here too is fine. I it's 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 in the background. You don't really it doesn't distract you very much. Uh, you have a range of acceptability for the the uh, opacity though. Right now we have it at a hundred percent. But if I were to let's say just uh, make it like this, we could take this down this opacity. You you don't want the contrast to go anywhere. I would say over this amount or so. It becomes just a little bit too distracting. So you want it definitely way more in the background. It's an afterthought. So let's bring that back. This works as well. All right, so now let's take this. And this right here is as a part of what people are referring to as new brutalism. Um, what we do is we have a high contrast shadow, but what's also accompanying it is a stroke. And I've covered this in my uh, sort of new brutalism video uh, a month or two ago. So what we do is we typically take it and give it a little bit of a thicker stroke. And this is also an aesthetic that we've been seeing. And this is quite fine as well. I guess you could call this a shadow. Uh, it's just a really hard, high contrast shadow. All right, next up, sometimes you have this approach. So let's just take, um, let's take this one. I'm gonna replicate it and push it over here. The card background is the same color as uh, the background in which it's sitting, but we have a real soft, not hard edge like this, we're, we're gonna do the opposite approach, a real large soft shadow. And this actually works really well um, in, in different contexts, so certainly on white backgrounds. Um, so what we could do is take this, we'll take our blur and just put it up to like 50. Um, and again, we want this to be real subtle. And we could also push uh, the X and Y value maybe to 10 and 10. All right, and so what this does is it gives you a, uh, a real rough, very low contrast outline of the actual card background, even though it's the same background color in which it's sitting. And this is fine too. And again, another thing you don't want to do, you don't, you don't want to do this. It's just way too distracting. It, 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 you start to make the content about the shadow itself. And I personally just don't like that. So this works very well on white backgrounds as well. Um, it's, it's, it's an aesthetic that I see that's used often. So if we take a white background here, we put this card inside of it and use our bracket keys to bring it to the front. Actually, let's not do that. Let's take this and move this to the back. Looks like I, yeah, let me take this. I'm screwing things up here. What is it, what is going on? There we go. And we take the, this card background and make it white. This works really well as well. I, especially if we're just gonna make it a black or a desaturated shadow. So that works really well. Another thing that we can do is we can get make a, another type of shadow, and this is gonna be our final shadow, is we can also give it a colored shadow. All right, so we'll take our shadow properties and we'll just push it over here. Again, you don't wanna do this, too contrast, way too much. Uh, we want it to be coming somewhere over here in this area of the color spectrum. And we could just drag the hue slider over here and get some really cool looking colors that work well. Again, you don't want high contrast, you want it to be an afterthought. And these all work very well. If I extend this over, we can get a couple more examples of these colors that look really cool. 
and achieve what they're supposed to achieve. And that's just to create a, a, a general outline of the cards in which they're sitting. And that is it. So we can see we've gone from no shadow, which works, a subtle shadow here, a hard shadow, but low contrast, very high contrast, hard shadow. Right here, a very low contrast, large, soft shadow. Then we have the same card background color and a very large, actually it's very similar to this shadow right here. And then colored shadows, which also work very well. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. Obviously the key takeaway here with your shadows is to avoid high contrast shadows unless you're doing something like the new brutalism aesthetic. So as always, make sure to subscribe. If you haven't yet, check out designcourse.com and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.